Hello, and welcome to the Awareness Self-Directed Learning. This module is about reporting incidents. During this module, we are going to be discussing what is an incident, why is reporting necessary, why don't workers report, when should an incident be reported, and how do I report an incident. We're going to start with what is an incident. So the, the textbook definition of an incident is an unplanned, undesirable event that hinders completion of a task that may cause injury, illness, or property damage, or some combination of all three in varying degrees from minor to catastrophic. Unplanned and undesirable does not mean unable to prevent. Unplanned and undesirable also does not mean unable to prepare for. Emergency planning is how we prepare for serious incidents that occur and require response for mitigation. The next question that's often asked is why is reporting necessary? Instant reporting is necessary for several reasons. To get timely medical attention. It's also important part of triggering an investigation so that corrective actions can begin to prevent others from getting hurt. It also allows for the OHS or the Josh Committee to follow up on recommendations. So reporting triggers all of those activities. Continuing on the theme of why reporting is necessary, if an employee requires medical attention or loses time from work due to the incident, it may result in a WCB claim. Therefore, completing the documentation is required in order for WCB to make a decision. So there's the internal instant report that may be completed, but there's also additional WCB documentation that is required. Also, the Nova Scotia OHS Act requires that certain incidents be reported to the Department of Labor and Advanced Education immediately. And we're going to um, talk about that a little more in depth in the next slide. So when we talked about needing to report to the Department of Labor, and this is not that the worker needs to report to the Department of Labor, it's the organization that needs to do that, but so that you clearly understand what um, is expected from the organization and hence what you need to do in your reporting. So if there is, there's uh, a couple of categories here. So a fatality, you have to report that immediately to the Department of Labor. Now these came out in June 12th of this year, so there was some clarification around these definitions. For serious incidents, they need to be reported as soon as possible, within 24 hours is the expectation. And they give some more definitions around that what that means. So if someone loses consciousness, is there's a fracture to the skull, spine, pelvis, arm, leg, ankle, wrist, or major part of the hand or foot, a loss or amputation of leg, arm, hand, foot, finger, or toe, third degree burns, loss of sight in one eye or both eyes, asphyxiation or poisoning, any injury that requires admission to hospital, any injury that endangers life. And then they give another um, definition for serious incident. So that's as soon as possible within 24 hours, an accidental explosion, a major structural failure or collapse of a building or other structures, a major release of a hazardous substance, a fall from a work area where fall protection is required by the regulations. So those are the definitions as they're laid out by the Department of Labor. So one of the common things we hear, um, both from 
organizations and from frontline workers is that incidents are not getting reported. So we thought it would be a good idea just to review some of the reasons why workers don't report incidents. So many times workers think that it's a minor injury, therefore it's no big deal. So they don't report it. But I think what's important to remember is that all injuries need to be investigated. The level of the investigation is going to be quite different for minor injuries maybe than, than more serious injuries. But they all need to have some type of attention. And without that documentation, it may be difficult um, for WCB or others to make a decision on a claim if it's not documented from the beginning. So a lot of times an incident will happen, a worker won't report it, but then two or three days, days later they may get some aches and pains or, or feel some ill effects from something that happened previously. So it's better to document it up front. Sometimes um, workers are embarrassed to report the incident because either they feel like, oh, well, that was a silly thing for me to do, or I didn't quite understand how to do it, or I didn't quite follow the procedure. So sometimes that's what happens and workers don't report. So workers that may be afraid to report, especially new employees, for many reasons, we need and the organization needs to create an environment that's blame free, that it's all about making sure that we prevent that from happening again. Some of the other reason why workers don't report is sometimes workers don't know that they should report. They don't know that really everything's reportable. And this needs to be discussed in the orientation. Sometimes workers don't know how to report. So my question to you is, do you know how to report an incident in your organization? So we need to make sure that if you don't know the answer to that question, that you find it. And as an organization, we need to make sure that staff are trained on how to fill out a report and know who to report to. Then sometimes supervisors are not always aware of their responsibilities and following up with the, an incident once it's reported. So supervisors and any charge staff have a legal responsibility to complete the documentation that's required every time an incident is reported. Sometimes workers don't feel that there's any point in reporting. Um, they don't understand or see how their needs are going to be addressed and they're not really sure that actions are going to take place outside of um, when they report it. So it's very important that um, if you're a worker that's reported something, you, you have every right to follow up and ask where that investigation is and what the results of that incident were. And more and more organizations are trying to build into their system that they loop back with the employee and fill them in on what the outcomes of the reporting were. The other thing is workers and healthcare and community service are very busy. We have a lot of demands on our time and they don't feel they have time to complete those. So we need, you need to take the time and the organization needs to make sure they make time for you to do that. And, and there always needs to be the increasing the awareness of reporting incidents. So that's on both sides. Workers need to report it and an organized needs to need to support that, um, that reporting. The other thing is, is it helps and when we think of Ben Franklin's quote is an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And really, the more we report, the more we know about the more we can prevent other things from happening and other people from getting hurt. So when should an incident be reported? Well, reporting incidents should be done right away, no matter how minor. Um, because a lot of times it's the minor ones that will say, oh, we'll do that later, we do that later, and then they're forgotten about. An incident must be documented, and your organization may document that in a number of different ways. And I couldn't even begin to go into all the different ways that that could be documented, but there needs to be some documentation, even for the minor injuries, because they can, they can lead to more serious injuries over time. Reporting an incident right away will allow the corrective actions to take place sooner and probably prevent others from being injured. And we, we see this all the time in 
that people ignore those minor things near misses close calls or just minor things that happen and then someone gets more seriously injured and then there's a major injury and a large investigation so we need to get to the reporting right away so we can get to the corrective actions right away so when and how should an incident be reported? This kind of goes back to my previous slide, is you need to refer to your individual organization title or policy and procedure. The injured person or a witness to some, some incident that's happened or a hazardous condition needs to inform the area supervisor of the incident as soon as possible. You need to complete the incident form for all injuries and near misses and you can some organizations may use the same form for reporting identified hazards or they may use a different form but this is where um, because we're um, doing this for a number of organizations we can't get into the specifics but go back to my previous and make sure you go and understand how you report and what that form looks like when and how an incident should be reported um, accessing first aid treatment treatment immediately um, if necessary and if medical aid is sought a WCB accident report will need to be completed and it will needs to be signed by both the employee and the employer and when the incident report is filled out this is really what triggers the incident investigation so the investigation is going to look at why um, you know there needs to be an investigation because something happened who's responsible for conducting the investigation and how the investigation will be performed and that'll be a little different in every organization the most important thing for you is to get the forms filled out start the process and then ensure that there's some follow-up with you so that you know the outcomes of the instant report that you filled out we do have a instant report that we may that we will do some education on later it may not be exactly like every organization uses it's the one that we know more and more organizations are using and we will do some another self-directed learning session on that at some point but um, you just follow up with your organization on their current form how you fill that out and who you report it to You've now completed the self-directed learning module on reporting incidents. You can close out the video and click on the link below. When you click on the link below, there'll be a post-assessment evaluation. You answer the questions. If you get all the answers correct, a certificate will pop up and you can print that off. Um, if you're unable to print it off because you're on a mobile device or something else, then we have a record of it and we can let your employer know. Um, if you don't get any uh, a question correct or all the questions right, it'll ask you to try again. It will also ask you to fill out a form which has your name, your employer, and those uh, your email, that kind of information. So thank you for taking this learning module.